G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now I'm pissed off, right? This kit here from Revel says 1 to 150, right? Bull stuff, right? Absolute rubbish. No, it's 1 to 230. They are ripping you off by half again of the kit's size. It's not that big. Now, why did they do this? Well, sometimes manufacturers will round ship scales down a little bit. 10%, right? Airfix do it. They have... The ships are supposedly around 144 of the classic sailing ships. All right? They never were when they first come out. They're just box sizes. All right? But people go, oh, roughly around 130. And they range from 130 to about 150-odd scale. And, you know, so on average, it's close to 144. Sure, there are exceptions, and I'll talk about that. And there's the 196 scale, which works off a lot of old plans, and I'll explain why that weird scale has meaning. And in fact, Revel got it right for their 196 scale constitution, and we'll talk about that. But this business of marketing it at 150, that is just blatant bad advertising. In fact, it's a complete breach of consumer law. They're telling you that you're getting something this big, and you're only getting it that big. They're lying. We can go to court, and we can sue them. But anyhow... I want to talk about all this rubbish about scales and why it carries on the way it is and what the problem is and how to solve it. Roll the music. All right, so what is going on? Well, there's no way that is 1 to 150th scale. It would have to be that much longer, all right? It just would have to be. It's ridiculous. Um, they do have a 1 to 196 scale kit. But that would still be longer. This is 1 to 2.30. And I'll go into the maths of that shortly. We'll get a rule out and I'll measure it all up. And I'll show you where it all goes wrong. In fact, what I think the marketing department has done in their brilliant wisdom is they've taken the overall length, right, which is 40.8 centimetres of their kit. And they've divided that into the length they found online. But the trouble is the length they found online is usually the distance from there to there, right? The waterline measurement. Normally you talk about a ship from stem to stern, right? The stem is basically here. There's a big piece of wood that goes up right there at the front. Everything comes off it for the bow. And the stern, there's a basically a big chunk of wood there, right? And pillar which the rudder comes off. So that distance there is a lot different to when you've got a spanker at the back and you've got a big bow spread at the front. In fact, it can be 50% bigger. There's that 50% again. This is what's happened. Some numbat <laughs> has gone oh look up the size of this ship okay well they, they say it's you know 53 meters from there to there great we've got a 40.8 centimeter <laughs> do the math oh that roughly comes out to about 150 that'll do well actually it isn't it comes out close to about 192 i think you'll find anyhow that's what they've done wrong and that's the thing but really it's just not acceptable in this day and age. If you say the kit is a scale, that's what it is. Now, this all stems back to back in the 1950s when this kit first came out. Back then, it was listed as on the box. Not all of them, but some of them later on had 15 and 3 quarters more than <laughs> inches. Okay? And that was right. That's how long the kit was when you built it. And this is the difference in ships between... The size of a kit as opposed to a size of a ship. Ships are measured usually at the waterline or stand, say, stem to stern, right? Stem post to rudder post, okay? That's the size of a ship, okay? You don't worry about what's hanging off it because that can change. That can get blown off in a storm and you have to rebuild it. So your bowsprit can be longer or shorter or, you know, you basically your, your jib, your, your booms at the back there, right? Okay? Your spanker, that could be shorter or whatever. You know, you can have a big spanker or a little spanker, right? Depending on how much money you pay. <laughs> Anyhow, that's basically why it all goes to kerfuffle. But let me try and break that down so that it's a lot easier to understand for you. And yes, there will be a little bit of math, but don't worry. I'll have a big rule out, and you better figure it out from that. So what is going on with this kit? Now, if you read the instructions that we will give you, the usual, you know, it tells you how many guns, it tells you when it was made, and all its accolades. Well, one thing they don't say is how long it is. That's very unusual. Every other ship kit that I've ever seen always tells you it was you know, so many feet long or so much tonnage. They'd give you some indication. I'd say they probably had that, but they've deleted it because somehow they're going to fake the 150, 1 to 150 scale. Mm, good on you, Revel. Okay, so 
The actual ship's overall length is 93 metres. Okay, you can look that up. It's everywhere. I mean, the ship exists still, so it's a known thing. So it is 93 metres long, but that included the spanker at the back, right? And the bowsprit at the front. But they've taken the measurement from the, um, the websites that say 53 metres, which is waterline, which is from there to there. So let's have a look. What is our waterline on this? So if I run the rule over here from waterline, and if you want to know what waterline is, well, ships of this period did not have a plimsoll line or a bootstrap, right? I know people try and put them on them, <laughs> especially like the, the Bounty and the um, St. Louis. People try and put a level line and paint it. No, it didn't happen. Ships usually were basically painted with the curves of the planks. But now, yeah, in the case of when they started putting the copper plating on them right in the late 18th century, sure, there's sort of then a line that you can go by. And here we can see it. We can see on the kit, there's copper plating, there's planks. Okay, so planks, copper plates. So that's what we want. So we have a look at that. We get 23 centimetres, right? 230 millimetres. All right, so we've got a little abacus here. And we know the waterline should be 53 metres, right? Overall is 93, but the waterline should be 53 metres. So 53, 1, 2, 3 for metres. We divide that by our 230 millimetres that we've got. And lo and behold, our scale is 230.43. That's the scale of the ship. Now we can double check this with some other measurements. Right, there's also another measurement, which is basically from the back post to the front one here. Okay, so there's a measurement all the way from the bow to basically where that, and that's 275. That's a sort of a, an overall hull measurement. It's including the beak in this one, all right. So 275. Now, how long is that in real life? Well, according to all the reference that I've done, it's 63 meters. Okay, so let's try that one. 63, one, two, three, divided by 275 equals, ah, oh, 229.09. Almost close to our 230. So there you go. Now, Revel does list here the kit is 40.8 centimetres. And this is why they're not getting sued, because they've listed the actual length that you get. So that is what you're getting. So that is truth. And it is, you know, but that is an overall from the tip of the bowsprit to the tip or the end of the spanker boom. OK, so 40.8. All right. So we know that overall length. So that overall length is 93. One, two, three. OK, 93 metres. And we divide that by 408 and we get, lo and behold, 227.9, right? 228. They're all very close to 230. 230 is basically the scale that you would list for this kit. So Revel, if you're watching, you need to rebox these kits and put the correct scale on them. We don't mind that it's 230. We don't mind that it's only 40 centimetres odd long. That's fine. Just list it correctly. Now, why did they get this so horrendously wrong? Well, let's do a little bit of history here. Back in the 1950s, they produced this kit, and it was probably a copy of an old wood model, as they were back then, okay? Because basically, there were wood ship kits out, and then plastic kits sort of came along, and a lot of manufacturers just started copying the wood kits so they could get a product to market. So rather than having to figure everything out themselves, if somebody had made a wood kit and it was fairly good, they just measure it up. Okay, let's back engineer things, right? Let's back engineer things and try and figure out what's going on here. The original box, there it is. All right. And on there it says it's 15 and three quarter inches. Okay. All right. So what is 15 and three quarter inches to sort of standardise things to get to my millimetres, because I'm, I'm working in metres and millimetres. So 15.75, remember it's a bit bigger than that. All right, so times 25.41, all right, which is 2.541 inches, you know, that's the math, you get 400. So if it was correct at 15 and three quarter inches, it would be around 400 millimetres long. They said it was a bit more. Well, it turns out, Revel says 408. So that's probably it. The bit more is probably 7.8 millimetres more. So that's it. That was correct. So Revel did at least not fib originally. They said this kit is 15 and three quarter inches long. They didn't say the scale. It's only later on the marketing in the 21st century trying to buddy shoehorn square pegs in round holes and try to make you believe that, oh, if you buy all these kits, they're all basically the same scale. 
But then you build them and then some are really big and some are really small and you go, hang on, this doesn't work. Or if like me, you're trying to build tools for the damn things and you're going, these scales are all over the place. Now, the large kit, the 1 to 96 scale kit, which came out later on in the 60s, which both Heller and Revel did of the Constitution. Now, that kit, they say it is more than 36 inches long. All right. So let's do the math. Okay. So we got... 36, we'll call it 37 because I said it was a bit more, all right, times 25.41. So the kit should be 940 millimetres long. All right, 96 scale, so multiply by 96 to scale it up. And lo and behold, we get 90, right, 0.2, well, metres. These are metres now because those three digits make it metres. That's close. They're not giving an exact length, right? They're just saying, hey, it's a bit more than 36 inches, all right? So how many would it actually be? All right, so if it's 93 metres long, divide by 96 scale, it should be 968, okay? And basically divide that by 25.41, get inches, it should be 38 inches long. So yeah, if you've got the kit, measure it. Is it 38 inches long? If it is, Revel got it right. So I hope that explains where Revel is sort of going wrong and how they messed up all their measurements, right? But look, they're not the only offenders. No, Airfix and Heller also do this. Now, here's an interesting thing. This whole business came about because I was trying to make some rigging tools for the Constitution, and it's one kit that I don't have. So I bought that little cheap United States kit, right? Thinking, oh, well, it's 1150 scale. So it's just simple math converting one to the other. All right, so I won't try and bore you with all that. But the thing is, for that to happen, things have to be constant. Things have to be correct. So I'm actually working at a 1230 scale ship and then trying to convert it up. It didn't work. This is the thing. I, I did the conversion and everything came out with my part and I printed my part out. And then I'm trying to make a dead run, which is my tool for putting in right, all the dead eyes. And they wouldn't fit. There's no way you could get the dead eyes in. I went, something's wrong here. And I'm looking at websites that tell you about how many dead eyes go in and how it's all rigged. There's not enough room. This isn't big enough. And that's when I started to realize, hang on, I need to measure up this kit. Measured up the kit, found out it's way out. It's way out. And then I'm worried about the 196 scale Revel, but that turned out to be actually correct. They got that one right. Okay. Now, Airfix and Heller. All right. These two little guys, they have also been bad, bad children. All right. I'm also doing Red Heart for my St. Lord's. Right. And that went perfectly. I just mentioned it off the model. That's it. Now, supposedly, although Airfix never put a scale on their ship, but everyone says it's 144 scale because Airfix ships are all 1 to 144, right? Okay. Although, as I said, they have varied. They have varied quite extremely from 125 up to 170, I found, actually. But okay, so it's about 1 to 44, 1 to 144, right? Okay. So I get an order for a Heller St. Louis. Okay, look it up. Oh, the Heller kit's 1 to 200. Oh, well, that's basically going to be a lot smaller, isn't it? All right, I better get some plans, get some measurements. Luckily, Heller give you proper, basically, profile plans of the ships. You don't get that with the Rebel. You try and find the Rebel Constitution as a vertical profile plan. Really hard. People want you to pay money for it. And there's none in the kit. There's the, they keep really quiet about this, probably because they know they've buggered up all the scales. They don't want you to figure it out. But Heller publishes a... Profile picture, right? And also exact lengths and measurements. Um, you can also measure it off the kit, but they were correct. From that, you can extrapolate everything and work out what sizes things are. And it turns out the Airfix, supposedly 144, is the same size as the Heller 1200. A fraction of difference, probably about 5% difference. So it works out they're both around 190 scale, 185 made for the Airfix, 190 for the Heller. Okay, for Heller you could say, right, they've rounded it up to 200 because they have a 200 range of ships. Okay, that's fine, you know, 1 to 200. But for the Airfix one, well, no, Airfix never declared it was 1 to 144. They didn't make that gaff. People have made that gaff. They've assumed everything's a constant scale. You know, this whole thing about, I want to build ships and they're all going to be the same scale. Well, they won't. See, back in the day, everything was box scale. That's what I was trying to sort of explain with the, with the whole Rebel thing, is that they were built to fit in a box or they were measured off a model, like in the case of Airfix with the Prince. There is an Admiralty naval model of the Prince, which was made back in 
the 18th century, so they know, actually, 17th century, sorry, 17th century, so they know this was made as what they used to build the ship. See, quite often they didn't do plans like we do them today. They didn't really draw a big plan out and the shipwright would come along and measure off the plan. No, the shipwright was given an idea, the keel will be roughly this length and it needs to be this much capacity. And those guys knew what they had to do. And the ship model builder would also understand the ratios, how things went together, and they would build up the model from that. And therefore they present the model and the Admiralty could look at it and go, yes, that's the ship we want. And the shipwright could have a look at it as well. But they knew the ratios. They knew what they were building. They basically just you know, give them one thing and off they went. This happens with rigging too. With rigging, you only need to know the diameter of the main mast. From that, you can extrapolate what the height of the mast is, all the rest of it. Or if you know the length of the hull, right, the base of the keel, you can work out what your sort of, and the weight of the ship, how much tonnage, you can work out how high your mast should be and how wide they should be. It was all a lot of mathematics. It was all understood. It was all ratios. Now, another quick one of sort of interest is the Revel 110 Bounty, which I've built, right? I know all about it. And the Revel 196 Beagle, right? Same kit. Sort of. About the only difference is between the Bounty and the Beagle, as far as Revel goes, is Revel continued the gunnel all the way around, right? Whereas the Bounty, you only got a little gunnel at the back, okay? Above the deck. They continued all the way around and they put in the decks, the extra decks. So there are a few more parts. At least they did that. But the hull is identical. The sails are identical. The masts are identical. Everything else is identical. They just made those few changes and on the hull they put provisions for the gun ports, right? For the Beagle. Beagle has a whole lot of pretend gun ports. I don't think they had that many guns on her, but anyhow, that's how she was. Now, why then are they different scales? Well, they're totally different sized ships for a start, right? The Bounty is actually a lot bigger than the Beagle. The Beagle is a lot smaller. The Bounty kit, when you do the scale down, comes to 110. It actually works. And you do the Beagle one for the scale, the size that they made it, you take it down to the real one, comes to just close to 196. I think it's more like 192. But again, Revel will just bump it up to their standard scales of 196. And this is what goes on. So if you really want to know what scale you're working with, you need to look up the ship's actual sizes and make sure what you're measuring on the kit is the same. And usually I say waterline. Stem to stern, that's it. So are you confused yet? Look, it, it seems strange to us now that you would take one-eighth of an inch and say that's one foot. They're kind of weird things. But that made sense back then when they were working in imperial measurements. And the thing is that the cartwright or the, the basically the cartographer, they knew that basically every inch on their drawing was eight foot. And, you know, that it was just a measurement and a way of doing it. Not very good. Not in the way we do things now. I mean, metrics base 10, guys. Everything's just 10s. It's really easy. <laughs> but that's kind of how it went. It's the same thing happens like with, with soldiers, right? One inch high soldiers are for six foot soldiers. So one inch is six foot. I don't know if you do the math. An inch to get to a foot, you're going to need 72 of them. All right. So how many inches do you need to get to six foot? 72. So that's how you get the 72nd scale. And then if you've got a half inch, right? So a half inch scale to a six foot soldier is double that one to 144. These are where the numbers come from. These are where those sort of weird numbers originated from because they're built from imperial measurements of a fraction of an inch to a foot or a multiple of feet. So that this was why modelers could do things and reference things in the real world. Like it's nice and handy if you know that all your figure is going to be one inch tall. Right? Very easy to do. And admittedly, back then, not everyone was six foot, but it's a rough measurement. OK, it's a rough measurement. So, you know, that's what you work off. And the same as if you need them smaller, or just make little buggers half an inch high, right? Little half inch high soldiers, right? Little half inch buggers, and they will all be 1 to 144. But you didn't need to know 1 to 144. It was easy to know half an inch is a foot, or six foot in this case. Especially like with a 1 to 96 scale, where it's 1 eighth of an inch is 1 foot. And again, it's 96 of them. So that's how you do it. All right, well, I've rattled on for long enough with all this sort of stuff. I, I hope you stuck through. It's... um. To me, it's interesting stuff. Well, it's annoying because I'm trying to make these harps, right? But I find the whole thing of the scales and the ship size and everything fairly sort of interesting. Well, I hope that's been some help to some people and trying to explain about all the weird scales and how they actually they all fit together and they sort of have meaning in their own little micro universe. And it's basically hangovers from imperial measurements and then now into, well, they're not metric measurements, but actual scales, physical scales of one to something as opposed to like, Half an inch is so many feet, you know, which is what they did. 
All right, well, look, um, buttons, button, 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 buttons. Apparently, there's lots of buttons down here. Please click those buttons. Click those effing buttons. It just, you know, it, it makes YouTube feel happy. And, of course, you can always buy me a curry. That'll be really good. I'm getting quite hungry because those guys next door are making too much noise and pissing me off. don't know if you've heard it all the way through the video. Rawr, 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 saw, 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 bang, bang, bang. I don't know. I give up. I give up. I've tried all morning to do this video and all I've got is noise next door. So your noise is now my noise. No, my noise is now yours. Anyhow, look, that's it. I've just, I've actually, I need a coffee. <laughs> it's a good pipe and it's hooray, hooray.